there you go check that out like i always say cookies and milk baby this video is brought to you in part by true tech tools quality tools essential support all right guys we got some filters there got a metal bracket here i bet you might know what that goes to let's grab a little, one of the bags here and let's go over here and take a look at what we got to take with us all right so we've got to change this compressor i found bad last year and they just now decided to get her done even though it was under warranty we've got our bracket here and we got our lift here which is 120 volts will still power up there somewhere we're gonna lift that up now yeah i could probably carry that with a rope or something like that i've got a rope here but work smarter not harder um just so you know i don't sell this if you want to copy it go for it there's not enough money in it to make it worthwhile to make them you know i'm going to sell so many of them that's why most people go out of business but uh to build it yourself if you got some handy skills which i hope you do if you're doing this not a big deal get the old handy dandy carrier yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's a couple pounds. All right, let's go ahead and weigh this thing. All right, there. Yeah, it was 95 pounds. Let me make it a little easier. Oh, smart. Eh, I stole people's ideas. I didn't want to pay for it. That's even better. That's even smarter. Exactly. Hard. Nah. Okay. Oh, that's the reason why you just set it down. It's too heavy. So as long as I got a plug in somewhere nearby, I'll be able to power that thing. It'll be good. Yep. There's one. That'll work perfect. As soon as you get this first one on here, you won't have to hold on to it much after that. There we go. Now we'll just release this and pull that down to the bottom, which I like that a lot better than the, uh, when you have to mechanically do it. Lock that back in like that. As you can see, I could make it super tight. It can go back and forth a little bit, but I had to make it wider so it'll fit ladders that have a, a wider width. Once it goes that far, it's not going any further. Yeah, if you wanted to get crank on it, or if you wanted to put another hole drilled there, on the back side you could do that yeah there we go that way we got it for next time i've only used this thing a couple times as you can see i mean we carried it this far yeah but you could rope it up you're gonna kill yourself doing it i mean it's hard enough it was bad enough just carrying the thing up here so i'm gonna do whatever makes it easier on me and it's got a little hook Ooh, there you go go ahead and get this stuff up with the rope and my hook and we got our cordless NAVAC pump here because this is 480 at this location. So that's going to make it a little easier. I don't have to run an extension cord 100 miles. Up we go. And then we got this all here. So we can go ahead and hook it and pull it right up the ladder. Okay, the unit we need to work on, I believe, is over there. So this will be a lot easier than what it was before with the other one I had. Let this thing wrap it up. I will just see that. I like to use gloves. There you go. Check that out. Like I always say, cookies and milk, baby. Got a little bit of a discrepancy there on my height. But we'll make our way around it. I ain't too worried about it. There we go. If that was straight up and down like it was originally built for, Cool. So if this was a heavy, heavy, heavy one, like 150 pounds, 200 pounds, you'd be able to lower it down just like that and you'd be good to go. 
How you like that stuff? Not bad. Like I said, we can take that slack up. This is the first time I've used it on this ladder type uh, design, and it worked just like I wanted. We have an eyelet right here. You can hook a rope on it. And as you noticed, it rotates around just like I needed it to. Yeah, I would not. I want to try to carry that up the up here under the roof. I'm pretty sure it's this one. But it's been last year in August, I think, when I found it bad. There we go. Yep, it's this one. Shorter to ground. 831.22. Not bad. I mean, like I said, it just sucks that it, we're just so high up. Yeah, it's just we're way too high to be able to lift that from the ground. Thing is, we're still not as high as what the whole factory is because we've got another roof over there. It's even taller yet. And there's a couple chillers here I found compressors bad on that I gotta change on that too. Let's go ahead and get this thing recovered and get her taken out. Yeah, those filters are a little dirty. Look at that. Anything to cut costs, man. Anything to cut costs. All right, before we get too far along, make sure this is the right one. 460 volt. It is a ZPS83K. We have a ZPS83K, CKE, CKE, TFD. I've been pretty happy with these crescent uh, side snips and linesmen. They've been really good. I don't like the jaw pliers as well, but that's just the way I don't like the way they uh, hook up with the metal. But otherwise, they've been really, really a nice uh, set of cutters. If you don't want to spend the money on Knipix and you want to get something that's good but not a million dollars, these uh, Crescent uh, K2 series, which this is a Z5428CG, they uh, do a heck of a job. And I made a video on some of these other homemade style tools, which you can buy this if you want to pay 45, 50 bucks for it. What this will end up working out to be in is this is your trip hook and then this is your lift hook which is all the same rope and then when you get down there and i've showed this on videos before so if you've seen it once before don't worry about it but go down there you hook it lift it up to lay it down boom release this is going to make it a lot quicker and easier to get my torches and uh nitrogen tank and all that crap up here without having to go up and down the ladder 60 times there we go and got it Okay, and up comes the nitrogen. Didn't have to go down there. A lot of less walking. I think I got it. Yep. Never. Because then you'll dump, dump your stuff, but. Like I said, this is my rope. It would have just, it just barely reaches that first floor. So I don't know if it would have reached all the way down there or not. Get everything recovered. Got the machine back downstairs. Got some of the things off the roof that we don't need now. We're gonna go ahead and just purge some nitrogen through this thing. That way uh, we can embrace it. Have clean braze joints. Last thing we need is extra carbon in the system. This is a 2020, so it was two years old. I thought it was a brand new startup or something, but it wasn't. Got a number two, but I, like I said, I like my little micro uh, rosebud here, and it's pretty much about the right uh, capacity for a lot of the uh, medium size pipes, you know, up to I think an inch and a half is what it's rated for, which obviously I've done two inch with a number two there we go get our nice okay let's get that second stage thing undone there there we go they put this gas line like right in the great spot here really thought out now they do have a solenoid oh boy yeah see it's definitely chugging it out you wonder why it makes a difference. That right there is it, because it's got oil in there. Yeah. I should have probably done that ahead of time. Oh well. Okay, there we go. Now we can move that away a little bit. Now when we heat that back up, she'll pop right apart. Hmm. 
Oh my freaking god. These guys freaking jam that thing in there for four foot. All falling down there. That's why you always remove your uh, torch away from it and you pull it apart. That's why you're supposed to cut it out also, but then you gotta splice in another one, have a coupling, which is an extra thought for it to leak. Yeah, I'm good. Let's get the discharge undone. Let's see if I can get it apart without any bunch, without a lot of fight. There we go, that's a lot better. Okay, let's see if we can get this around power that they wrote right in the front. There we go. There we go. Look at that. How pretty. My oil wiped up now because we don't want to leave that behind. Don't be a dirty technician that leaves your nasty mess behind, leaving the next guy wondering, do we have a leak? Well, it's really just you made a heck of a mess. We're gonna get that filter dryer out of there while we can now. Usually that's the very last thing after getting the compressor in. Well, we're gonna keep on breaking rules here. You're supposed to cut it out, like I said, on the compressor. Let's get that nitrogen rolling again. All right, there we go. Got her going. Actually, if I go one leg and goes all the way down, it actually hits down there. So gotta get that filter that flew over there when I dropped them down there. All right, so we got everything back to the truck. Got an arrow here. We wanna make sure that it's stamped in there correctly because the sticker could easily put on wrong. We're gonna see maybe if we can slide this over top of the current uh, pipe. Sometimes you can Bow that thing out a little bit. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's gonna be like, like, like they're brand new. Like this horrible thing never happened. Do a little purge through there. That's gonna come out through here. So we just shoved all the oxygen out. Now we can put it down to braze mode. I think I might use my other torch tip though. I think that's about as far as it's going to go down in there. I think we got it. That heat just wraps around it pretty pretty nice yeah here's that way now we're gonna burn a little bit of paint off I'm sorry there ain't much you can do about that that's just gonna happen see how she's sucking upwards there we go getting her right up in there good deal he pulled out all the way around there you can see where it pulled all the way up all the way up in there at least a good quarter inch or better now this will do up to i think an inch but i don't like bending it a bunch um but it does a nice job unfortunately true tech tools does not sell this i wish they did but they don't i will put a link for this down below if you can get it through true tech tools i want you to get it through them if you if they don't offer it then i have a amazon link you can go through them i make a uh, couple percentage points off of the Amazon and mainly get the support out of True Tech Tools. And with that torch tip being like that, you're getting on getting off very quickly. And you know, it's, it's hot, but it ain't burning the skin off my fingers, obviously. Hey, electricians, this is why you don't run the wire right across here. Let's see if we can't get this bent back into place. a little bit and I like to see if we can wiggle that turkey in there 
So let's go ahead and pop that back off. Otherwise you're gonna take the wire loose and walk it around it. I hit it from the upper side here where we got heat coming from all directions. I'm not getting blinded. There we go. There we go. Yep. All right. This other one, I don't know. We may just, uh, like I said, you can open that up to hit it. But at that point, you start shooting straight ahead. And sometimes I just don't feel as though that's quite worth it. This works awesome for, I would say, more like half inch and below. You can go bigger, but it's just not, not really that great for it. On that base inside piece first. Damn, oh man. Just, there you go. There man. I think I got it. Looks like we got nice wrap around. I don't know. We're going to get a little something on there and we'll spray it here and we'll see. There we go. Get this bad boy tapped in there. We should be uh, ready to pull back here in a second. So far, we're at 156. We'll see if it drops. Let's go ahead and valve off and we will spray it. Spray and pray. We will have to put a wire tie on that, otherwise it's gonna shake, shake, rattle, and roll. Get rid of the solid. Give her a solid. No air bubbles. Looks to me like I must know how to braise. Got lucky on that one. Make sure there's nothing rubbing back here on any of that crap. And I'd say let's blast this nitrogen out of here. We've, one thing that's kind of bad about these uh, max core tools they got, you can't, um, I don't have a valve core tool for those that they're stupid money. So what I use is a depressor. So what we got here, this thing will crank in and that'll press that thing all the way down nice and far and open it up wide open, which is the whole reason why the factory's using them. We'll isolate the, uh, and see how that just did that? That is why when you close it off to uh, check your vacuum that it sometimes rises real quick. So when you close it, when you're doing your vacuum, you wanna kinda of go halfway. There's a spot in that ball valve, believe it or not, that actually gets trapped. As always, you can get this stuff at True Tech Tools. 8% off with discount code SURVIVAL at checkout off your total order. I've been told there's some exclusions, but I've not really seen any that I've ordered off anything I've ordered. So more times than not, you're getting the, the better deal there all the time and you support the channel. Uh, like this here, it's kinking me a little bit. That's because I've got the right angle tool on there, which I got those not too long ago and it makes it a lot easier to get into some tight spots. So we'll go ahead and crank this thing down and that'll press that valve core all the way down on that core max. And then we have the valve core tool there isolating it so that when we want to recharge it, we can charge it. We got the Blue Vac Pro, which in my opinion is one of the best vacuum gauges, period, bar none, nothing better. I have the blue one that I started with over 10 years ago and it's still going good. Had some problems, got it all the factory. They fixed it for just a small fee. Um, I mean, we're talking like 50 bucks. I mean, holy crap. I mean, that's a $250, $300 uh, ordeal. And then while we're advertising for all the great companies out there, we got Navac, awesome four CFM pump. This one's a little more money than the two, but you know, I've got an extra battery or two now. I got the new batteries. 
which have the green LED light on it and a USB. Uh, got these in April. Makes it so much easier. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing done off of one hose just to kind of see how long it takes to do it. Because honestly, I was never a big one hose. Battery went dead on the GoPro. Let's go ahead and turn this. We'll see how long this thing takes. 1252. Make sure that gas ballast is open. She's gonna pull a lot of refrigerant. Oh yeah, you can see this oil looking really shoddy. That oil's looking a little shoddy. You can see that she's already starting to drop on the lines there. Well, she's moving along. Well, while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and get this uh, belt changed. That was one other thing that I had him quote doing while we were here. Good time to highlight. I think I did a short on this one. This is the uh, Viper uh, brazing pad they got, which is pretty kick-ass. It's uh, got the little cut there. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than the other one that's out there that you've seen. Uh, I could have been showing that one off, but Viper came through, provided it for me to try out and try it and see how I like it. And so far, I've been real happy with it. It don't have any of that weird, you know, fiberglassy feel to it or anything like that. Um, I've been running it wet because I braze. It's going to give it longer life. Don't want to uh, braze on that. It's a sticker. It will melt it from what I've heard from other people. But it's been doing great. I've uh, been happy with it so far. I always love uh, Viper products. These guys are great. Now we'll leave this extra, this old one here, because it's better than none at all. It's the middle of winter and it breaks. Last thing I want is not have a belt. You never know what you're going to need. So we're going to have to loosen that up. You don't want to roll the belt on. You will break the uh, bands inside the belt. Uh, obviously, this one here is pretty dang tight. Now, notorious, it's got one back there hidden. And then you got proof. Yeah, I changed that thing. Look at that. I got it all over my hands. That's fantastic. Uh, I started at 52 after, and we're at 03 after, so we're at 11 minutes. And we're already at 1118 microns, so we can shut that gas ballast. See if that speeds it up a little bit. I heard it change in pitch a little bit. That oil needs to change something fierce. We are just about there again. A little closer than we were earlier, so we're at 800. Won't be long. All right, and finally, Testo. Testo's been really good to me, too. So uh, they actually talk to me and take care of me. So you got to support Testo. They're good stuff. I've always liked Testo's manifolds because they were small and they don't take up a lot of room. Uh, I don't like a small spaceship on my unit. It kind of gets in my way. I'm trying to work on it. So we've just valved off. We're watching. See what kind of rise we get on it. We're going to get this thing filled up as long as it stays where she needs to be at and get her up and going. I can't see that, but they're crop, crop dust in there. Yellow plane over there. All right, she's holding there. I'm happy with that. So let's get this thing juiced up. We're gonna break this vacuum on the suction side. Once we get out of the vacuum, we'll go ahead and then start dumping it on the liquid side and kind of start going from there. And I love the fact that I can sit there and add the refrigerant to my unit. I could go grab my solenoid valve, which just kicks and uh, weigh it right in there, do superheat, let it charge itself. Now, like I said, I can't put my high side gauge on there yet because we're in a vacuum. The last thing I want to do is suck in air. There's nothing in there there. We're in a high pressure zone. Now you can remove your, yeah, remove your uh, blue vac. And like always, blue vac doesn't care about pressurization. I think they're good for well over 500. <laughs> And I never have problems with it getting oily. And if it does get oily, you just it'll tell you that it's oily. And then you can uh, clean that sensor. I use a little bit of spray cleaner that's made for cordless tools, cordless air tools. And um, that's the easiest way. I had so many problems back in the day with uh, micron gauges back in the day. And you know, it just, that's why I never used them. I had problems with quite a few different ones. And uh, that's why I quit using them. The resolution on the blueback, it sits there and shows you. 
immediately that you know hey we're going way up or going way down whatever no special handling i mean obviously you got to treat it right but it just did a great job see this would be a great example where i should have used the solenoid and i did this on the last video where i did show it being used i could have walked away from this started taking things down to the truck and unfortunately actually i have it up here darn it yeah solenoid so yeah i could have just turned that thing on and boom could have had it walked away but we're about nine pounds now so we'll just go ahead and hold off on that we save it for another day i don't know how long this is going to take to kick on or if it'll even kick on because i don't know if this even does an area that's all that important so let's see if we can make this thing run with a jumper okay so i went down there and tried to find the thermostat well there's multiple layers and these can go for the floor underneath me or they could be the floor all the way below me and some of these like you see this one right here side by side might be forever to coon's age before you finally find it so what we got going on here uh we went over by two tenths of a pound and uh we're kind of just going to watch it we're at 33 degree evaporators and we'll see how this goes so far we're looking good superheat 17 16 so i think we're going to be fine I heard the solenoid click. I went ahead and got the extra jumper on there, and she's doing about what I anticipated. I don't know what the outdoor temperature is. I think it's because we are running 57 degrees, 57 degrees. So 67, 77. We're 21 degrees over ambient. Not bad. Running a 15 degree superheat now and an 11 degree subcooling. Everything's looking pretty good from what I'm seeing right now. So we're gonna let this run for a little bit and then we uh, hopefully we'll be able to wrap this thing up because my time's up. All right, it's holding in there really good. So we're dumping everything back into, from the hoses back into the unit. Superheat's up there at respectable level. Subcooling is too. Uh, looking good. We've gotta strap that yet. It's the only thing we gotta do. All right guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Just uh, another day, another dollar. So anyhow, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.